Okay, so step 13 asks you to create basically a mounting point for the knob. If you follow the dimensions I give you, it will work. It should work with the toaster. So again, top plane, Alt S, Alt N, Alt S to create a sketch, Alt N to make it normal. We're looking at the top here. I want to look at the bottom, so I'm going to hit Alt N again. O for circle. And again, same thing. I can see the origin. I'll hover over it until I see that yellow box appear with the dot and click and drag. And now I have my circle attached to the origin. It's really hard to see, but this, this plus in the center of the circle is black. And we want to set this dimension, I believe, to 0.2. You know, it's not critical. These dimensions aren't critical, but it will help with the mate. And then features extrude. I believe you want it to go 0.25 down and out. You know, if we're simulating like this being a real product, this is typically how knobs attach to you know, uh, stoves and stuff. If you pull the knob off your stove, if you look at the bottom, there's probably, a, I, I believe this is called a sprue um, that, you know, it's kind of like a boss that, that attaches, sprue or boss. Um, and this is just enough to sim simulate it for uh, a file. Um, reminder for checking with the seam, that is under um, this icon here. Now you'll notice if I turn this on, I have these black lines. This is not a seam, this is just a contour line. To check the seam, you wanna hide these black lines. And when I grade your work, that's what I'll do. Um, if you want, if you wanna get like, really check it very carefully. If you hit Alt-Z as in zebra, you bring up these things called zebra stripes. Um, and what this does is it shows you tangency. If these are all connected and blended, that means you don't have a seam. If I just quickly drag this back up and unsuppress these, and I'll show you what zebra stripes looks like with this on. Alt Z. Do you see how do you see how the stripes stop and go from black to white? That's how you know there's an issue. It's not critical, but just for some of you. I also know some of you have accidentally turned this on. So if that's an issue for you. Um, okay, side note there. So it's step 13, we've created the sprue. We have this error here that pops up when I unsuppress that. It's this top corner gets lost. Or is it a bottom corner in this instance? Here it is. Just for what it's worth, if you see this like little exclamation mark, it means that a reference has been lost. Something that I was pointing to before, it's no longer pointing to it. So in this instance here, it's this bottom corner. If you click on this, it's, it's this like puke green color. It means it's lost. You can simply just click on this relationship and hit delete. Um, you can also rebind it if you want. It's now this turned blue. You can drag this back to the corner and click on this. It got lost because when I unsuppress this loft, that corner gets blended into the shape. Okay, back on track here. Step 13, make this box. Step 14, it says cut or add a shape at the top of the knob as an indicator. This is really important. So I want everyone to listen. For project two, it is necessary that every knob have an indicator. That's an easy way for me to take off points. This is something that I want it to be realistic. The indicator tells you which way the knob is pointing. This knob has some directionality to it, but the top and the bottom are identical. Without some kind of like feature, there is no indicator here, I would take off points. So this project will have a certain number of requirements for believability and, and realism in the knobs, handles, and feet you're designing. For the knob, one of those things is the indicator. So there's a couple ways to create this. Um, if I turn these lines back on, probably the simplest way to create it is simply to select this top face, hit Alt S to create a sketch on it, Alt N to look normal to it, uh, O to create a circle. This doesn't have to be precise. If you want like best practice, this sketch would probably be better on the top plane. Um, again, best practice would be to have this line connecting to the origin set this to be for construction. The size of and shape of this doesn't matter. Um, you could make it a rectangle, whatever. And here, what I've shown here is an extrude cut. Um, simply down into this for maybe like 0.05. And now that's kind of an indicator. Now the knob has an orientation to it. Step 15 is add fillets. So at the bare minimum, um, I'm also going to say for project two, I'm going to be more strict. If I see raw edges that don't have fillets, especially if they're like 
important edges. You need to say it's something you might interact with. I will take off points for that. If you want a look like the Cybertruck and have it look sharp, at least put a small fillet on there, like a 0 0.05 or a 0 0.02 would be the smallest I'd probably go. So in this case, we're just selecting both of these, dropping a fillet on them and clicking check. And that gets us through step 15. I would say this is the most basic knob you could have. Um, probably best practice to fill at both of these edges, but maybe I won't be quite that strict as long as it's like these touch points where your hand is touching. So the next two steps, steps uh, 16 and 17, is how to add an embellishment to this to make it look a little bit more real. So for example, step 16, it has you create a sketch like the red line. It's simply just a sketch across the front like this. Again, sometimes it's okay to have completely blue sketches if you want best practice for rebuilding. You know, this is a little bit different than the, than the bottle project because it's not like you need two volumes of this knob. However, if you plan to modify the knob and try and get one knob and get another concept out of it, that's when dimensioning becomes a little bit more important. It is okay towards the end of your tree if you have like a little bit looser CAD. I don't, I personally think it's okay. Um, but with this line, what you want to do is go to Features, and you want to look for this command, Split. If you don't have it there, simply type it in the search bar, and it should come up. Split is kind of a weird command, because when you click on this, um, and I apologize, this is not actually written in the steps here, so please pay attention or make notes as needed. Um, when you bring this up, I'm in the sketch, you can see it loads it as the trim tool. In order to make it trim, you must click in this box first. So this is the part that's not listed in this demo. It is, however, listed in the hand handle demo. So if you're confused when you get here, if you scroll or flip to this page, this step three explains it when you use the split feature. Click inside the box labeled one, then click on either side of the sketch. So same thing here, click inside the box labeled one, so click there, and then click on either side of the sketch like that. And you can see now it splits the, the knob into two, top half, bottom half. Now what this does is you'll notice we have two bodies here. If you throw like a small fillet on this edge, so again, 0.05 or point, let's go 0.03. Uh, 0.03 is too big, let's go 0.02. That's half a millimeter here. And then fillet this here. You have, you have the results when you render this that it looks like there's kind of like a cap on top of the knob. So these are very simple things you can do to make your products look and feel more real are adding part lines. Um, I want, at the end of class, what I'll do is I'll give you a list of like what my requirements are for project two. I mean, right now what I'm thinking is that at minimum, I want to see three part lines across the entire project. Um, and then again, indicators on each knob. Okay. Um, okay, the next step, 17, is creating a bezel. So again, a lot of knobs, especially like on grills, um, they'll have like a chrome bezel or something surrounding the knob. Sometimes there'll be graphics on there. Uh, not always, but, you know, I think I would like to see at least one bezel in the project. Let me just start writing these down. Um, so this is how you might create a bezel. It's quite simple in my opinion. So front plane, create a sketch. Um, in this instance, it doesn't really matter. I would probably try and align it with the origin. I think that's best practice here. It'll align with the base of the knob. You can run this up, run it across and down, simply to create this kind of bezel shape. Set this to be for construction. If you want to follow my dimensions, I think I made this basically a millimeter at 0.05. And I made this down here an eighth at 0.13. And now this gap is somewhat arbitrary. It can be visual. So here's where, if we go to revolve, this is again another issue, another situation. For some reason, it automatically selected this. Whenever it sees a construction line, it kind of assumes that's what you want to revolve around. So I'm going to delete this. And what I'm going to do is take an opportunity to use what I showed earlier. If you go to view, hide show, turn everything on, and then make sure that uh, temporary axes are turned on. You'll see that we have a temporary axis down here from this revolve. So for the axis of revolution, you can select this, and there's our bezel. Now it is important that you uncheck merge result because the bezel is a separate piece. This is another part line that we're creating here. 
Again, if I hit Alt V to kind of turn turn off all the lights, the master sketch. I'll turn the lines on so we can see this. You should have a slight gap in here. You could, if you want, just like run some fillets. I think this would be a good idea to put some small fillets on here. And now this knob feels a little bit more real, a little bit more finished. When you when you mate this to your toaster, this will have a better look. So I want to see at least one bezel in your project, okay? Uh, the bezel, this gap here, will not count as a part line. Okay, if we look at the bottom of the sheet here, like some final steps. So other possible embellishments could be knob grips. So think about it. If you put some grips on your handle, like down here, we have some grips here. That's a, that's one way to tie a family together. So this is not on the sheet, but I'll just try and show this somewhat quickly if I can. So I could, for example, on this front plane, here's, again, this is some more kind of like rough CAD. If you create an arc and kind of put it close by like this. This is a really uh, simple way to create grips. So again, this is like kind of loose, rough CAD. If I exit that sketch, Alt-V to turn on sketches so I can see them. Again, this is where it's useful. So insert reference geometry plane. Simply clicking on this dot and this line, it'll create a plane normal to that. This is a good way to use creation of planes with sweeps, OK? I think the first sweep it, demo, it gave us a plane from the middle or from the front plane, so it was easy. But if you ever need to create a weird sweep, again, insert reference geometry plane. We'll bring this up. For the first reference, you can select the point where you want to start your sweep. And the second reference, select the path, which in this case is an arc. So now that I have this new plane, I can create a sketch on it. Alt-S, Alt-N to look normal to it. But maybe that's a bit confusing, so just I'll rotate this. If I create a circle on this dot, I can now sweep cut. It's not giving it to me as an option, so I'm going to exit the sketch. Um, here it is, sweep cut. I can click on this. It should work exactly like a sweep. So profile, I'm going to select the circle. Cut, I'm going to select the arc. You can kind of see the path. Right, we got a macaroni noodle here. If I click check, it gives you kind of a nice blend in and out. And because this is rough cat, it's a little bit harder to edit, but simple things you can do is just like, oh, here, let me show you why I'm editing this. You know, this is a bit sloppy in my opinion. It's kind of cut cutting a little bit high. So I can either make the circle smaller or I can make the arc smaller, one or the other. In this case, I'm just simply going to take the circle, drag it a little bit, diameter a bit smaller, exit it out, and there you go. This would be something, um, I don't know how well this will pattern. I'm willing to give it a try. We can take the top face, copy this initial arc here. I don't know which one we would want it to follow. Maybe this. We don't, uh, we could try having it go all the way around. Let's see what happens. No, I'll be honest, I don't think that's going to work. I, uh, what I would do is I would trim it to just get half of this. So I create a line there, T for trim, so that we only get half. Set this to be for construction. So now we have this path for this to follow. You could also try the circle if this doesn't work, or we can try. So linear pattern, curve-driven pattern, for the direction we want this sketch we just created. And for the features, we want this swept cut. And I don't think we want this many. Let's just say we want two at a little bit more spacing. And now simply you can do one of a couple things. You, this is where it's useful to remember like right plane, surfaces, cut with surface. You could cut half of this away. And now if you use this right plane, you can mirror this again. And now you have the grip on both sides. You don't have to do all that twice. So if you know you want to add grip, my advice to you when you build this knob would be to start af stop after this mirror. Put the grips in at this stage, and then put this mirror in. That's, again, kind of just like best workflow. Great question. Yes, 
let's say you want to add the grips. This is what this bar is actually, that's the intent of it. That's what it's for. You can scroll back up to the mirror, drop the grips in here. So like, again, you can just build in. So here, I'll show you maybe some other grips. Let's go with a right plane here. Maybe you want to go with like a dot pattern because you have like a, I don't know, your brand language is toad or something. You can go extrude and you can say offset from surface. Select the surface and reverse the offset so it bumps out. Something small like maybe 0.2. Click this checkbox. And now when I drag this below here, you got the warts on the other side. Maybe you want a little bit more. Here's a new tool that students love that I always forget to talk about. Dome is a fun tool. You simply click on these faces. I believe the dome is too big for this. Let's try a smaller number. You see that it adds little, little bumps on top. It's not the greatest tool, but it, it's kind of cool in a pinch. You know, maybe this would also benefit from fillets. I think you all get the point. And then simply drag this down. And again, now you have um, you have some grips on your knob. Make sense? So there's different ways to approach it. This this like extrude offset from surface. Again, actually, really, if you're doing this, this would probably be even better before this mirror. So here's another thing you can do. Let's see if this works. If I take this mirror and drag it to below this, it should put these bumps on this side too, simply by just rearranging the order of the features. So don't forget, you can always rearrange and drag features to your own benefit if you want like more bumps or what, whatever it is you're going for. Any other, any other questions? So again, um, for the knobs, I want to see indicator. I want to see at least one bezel. And just remember, grips is a good way you can tie um, one knob to like a handle or something, right? I would expect your handle here to also have these kind of wart features. Okay, um, I'm going to move right along into the handle embellishment demo. Um, again, you're welcome to follow along. Based on what I saw in your handles, I think most of you were fine. So uh, I, it, I give you permission to not do this demo. However, I want to see some of these features in your project too. So this might be a helpful page to apply to one of your own handles. Let's see if I can open up. Um, let's see, which one do I want? Let's just go ahead with this one. If you want to pick up from where I left off with my handle, here it is, handle part line demo, solid part. Let's see if I have that and you can just open that. Project two, demo. Yeah, here it is, there we go. Here we go, handle part line demo. So this is Unbox if you want to download it. This will get you started in the right location. So most of you, I think I saw a lot of you turned in the demo for your homework, great. And again, for the most part, I like the handles I saw. Um, I haven't forgotten about your question, Armando, about the wavy thing. We'll get to that after this. Uh, one thing I do want to address is for your handles, again, some of these things that I'm looking for when I'm grading. I'm looking for a realistic gap here, okay? So I did see this in the homework at one point. I want the gap between the glass face and the handle here. Oh man, I would even say this is too low, but let's, let's say this should be at least an inch. Honestly, that's too little. That should really be at least an inch and a quarter. Since it's an inch in this file, I'll accept an inch. Here's my reasoning. Anything less than that, you're probably gonna burn your knuckles on the glass. I want some real, realism to this, okay? So if I see a handle that's too flat, there is one exception. If your handle is intended to be a knob, then I'll give you a pass. Uh, but then it should clearly be a knob. If I see a handle that just like looks too flat and has that gap there, um, I reserve the right to take off points. So fair warning. Again, hopefully we catch all this stuff on Monday. Okay. So I guess moving on to this demo, I'll try and just keep this quick because I realize we're nearing the end of class and I want to leave some time for questions. So what it has you do is on this uh, front plane, it has you, well actually no, sorry. The first step is to roll the bar above the mirror. 
Now on this front plane, we're gonna create a sketch. This is a repeat from last class, I apologize, but I, now we have the page, hopefully it's clear. We're gonna convert entities on this curved line. Here, again, we're gonna go to the split feature. We have the sketch we were just in. The first thing you have to do is click in this box and then click on either side. And what this does, once again, is it splits this from one body into two. One of the weird things about the split feature, it does not consume the sketch. You could make an argument that you could just do the split feature with the master sketch because it does not consume it. It doesn't have it like live underneath the feature. Once that's done, it asks you to put fillets on here. So here again, I want, this is, I think, an important detail. If you have a part line on your file, I want there, there needs to at least be a fillet for it to count as a part line because otherwise it won't be visible in the render. I strongly advise that that fillet for that part line is 0.02 inches, that's half a millimeter. I'll accept anything around that. I won't be so strict that it must be 0.2. I will be strict though if there is no fillet on your part line. I will take off points. And again, it's all for the render. If I don't see a part line in the render, it won't count as a part line. I mean, I'll be able to see it in the file or, or not, but that's kind of the, the marker. Again, a big part of this class is how to make your objects and designs feel like real objects. So having a part line in here is, is part of that goal. Um, how much do you all know about manufacturing? Any, any, does this part line location make sense to everyone? Yeah, if some of your designs are supposed to be like solid pieces of wood or like a bar of metal, then yeah, I don't, wouldn't expect a part line. But it can also be an individual basis. Like we can look at some of that stuff Monday um, to see what's real or not. So if it is, um, so for example, I would count this as a part line here. Alex has a fillet on here. Probably a slight gap would be a little bit better. But now this looks like maybe a solid piece of metal that's held with a bracket. That's cool. I would count that as a part line. Um, if we look at this one here, I mean, yeah, this could be cast. I mean, if you want to be fancy, like, I think one of the things that Alex and I talked about was having exposed hardware. So for example, back here, instead of having this be blended, you could have this just be a cut. Let's see if I can just fake this real quick. So like instead of this extrude like blending to it, I'm gonna uncheck merge result. And then I'm just gonna create a sketch on here. I can, here's a new kind of tool, offset entities. So it offsets this circle. If you offset it by like 0.02, maybe less, let's go 0.01. Right, and then I'm gonna extrude cut this uh, into this handle. I'm just doing this a bit sloppy right now. Here's what's important. Feature scope, I want to make sure that I only cut this. I don't want to cut the, the mounting point. I'll count that as a part line. Now, that's that's probably not going to be in the render, but I'll see that in CAD. Um, and then maybe like exposed hardware on the front. So there are ways around it, depending on your construction method. And we can have those discussions on Monday during our review. We can talk about how to make your objects look more real. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, Specifically here, this part line, if this is a piece of plastic, it's very rare to mold a solid piece of plastic because what's gonna happen, you wanna think of it like baking a cake. Uh, it would dry on the outside first before it dried on the inside, so it'd be really warm here. If this is warm, you'll get like sink. Part of the plastic will like create dimples. It just doesn't look pretty. Um, it's also just a waste of plastic. That's a lot of unnecessary material in the center. Um, so you want to think about manufacturing here, just kind of like, uh, think about, again, baking I think is the best analogy. So here's a cupcake tin from the side. You make your, you make your ugly orange cupcakes in here. Um, it's, this is called draft so that the cupcakes can come out, or muffins or whatever, can, can pull from this cleanly. So if I translate this into the handle, so back to SolidWorks real quick, we'll look at it from the side. Technically, this is not quite right because this is coming around. This would be hard to exit the tool on this side. But if we look at this section view into my sketch here, 
this is the front part of the handle, and this is the back part of the handle. And that's why the part line is located where it is, because if we look at the mold, here's my cupcake tin, which is the mold. It's the same exact thing. It has to be able to pull out. Does that make sense, everybody? So just, way, just the way a cupcake tin is that you have to be able to move, remove your muffins and cupcakes, the mold for the handle has to be removable. I'll make an extreme example here to make a point. If this is, you have some weird handle design like this, and you decide to put your part line here on the front with a cap, that wouldn't work because imagine now you have your muffin tin to make this mold the shape you want it to be. Guess what? When you try to remove this, this is what's called reverse draft. That's not going to come out of your mold. It's, it's caught in there. So your part line should be at the widest part of your handle. That's something that um, I'll watch for. I don't, I'm not going to be strict on it, but I want, again, I want you all to have realistic feeling and looking things. Part lines are, part, are one of those things, and having them located in the right areas um, is critical. So like I, what I'll probably do is I'll weight it, like I will take off points, but I'll take off less points for wrongly placed part lines. Yeah, good question. So technically, I won't be quite this strict. Technically, yes, on my file here, this where I have it is technically wrong because if you look at this, whoops, I'll get it eventually. It should really be located here. It's because of the fillet, where the fillet ended up. If we take, if I suppress this fillet, um, and, now, and now fill it these back in. Really probably the better thing to have done with this demo would have been to say suppress the fillet. Now the part, this part line is located, this is, this is located properly. The fillet threw it off. Um, now you can see that this is in the widest place. Does that make sense? If you want to properly do it with the fillet unsuppressed, we're going to get some errors here because now these have been lost. Now for what it's worth, if, if you want to talk about points, again, like I said, I'm not going to be strict on it. I'll just take off a few points and I'll do it more so for a situation like this. If it's like a curved situation like we have and you're close, you know, if it's like this and you just happen to be here, I won't take off points for that. It's close enough. If it's something like this, I, I'll probably take off like 0.1 points, something small. So you, right, I see what you're saying. So you're saying, or let me make sure I understand what you're saying. If we go back to um, here and simply just mirror this, are you saying to put the part line right there? Or are you saying lengthwise? That would work too. That's fine. Um, it's often... I have often seen it done along this edge because then the, uh, it depends what you're going for because then the part line will be in the middle. That's not wrong. I've seen that too. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I've seen it both ways. So yeah, as long as it's somewhere logical, that's all I care about. Good question or, and good point. Any other questions on this part line stuff? Okay, sorry, I'm talking a lot. Correct. Yeah, again, so what I said is I want to see three part lines across your projects. Um, ideally, one should be a handle, I think. I'm completely lost now with what I'm trying to do here. But yes, it's up to you where to put those part lines. Does that make sense? Oh. This is why everything's broken. Okay, uh, let me try and finish this real quick. Sorry, big big detour there, um, and I'm losing track of time. So the remainder of the of this demo is just to create grips, which again I kind of showed you with the knobs, but just to show you again, it's roughly again best practice to connect it to the origin. 
create a circle, overlap it a little bit, um, extrude cut. Again, that says the setting through all both. What this does is it just makes sure it, it cuts the handle. It's a quick setting. And now simply we can use under linear pattern, curve driven pattern. Here for the direction, you want to select the sketch, your master arc, or whatever sweep direction you have for your handle. For features, you can select this. If you, for some reason, you don't see the yellow, it's probably because it's pointing the other way. So you just want to toggle this button. You know, get your spacing to what you want it and how many grips you want. And go ahead and click that checkbox. Um, very simple way to, to make this cut. Uh, you could, like I showed you in the demo with the knob, have it be an arc and a swept cut is one thing you could do. Uh, wouldn't hurt to add fillets on here. Again, probably best practice to do this before the feature because then you don't have to click on so many arcs. And then simply just go back, let this, and, and get this mirror. Sometimes you have to edit the feature here because it only mirrored the back, so right click on this. and select this. Uh, oops, sorry, you have to reselect both of them. And merge result seems to work. And there you have it, you got a handle with grips. So again, these grips could then relate to the knob and what have you. Okay, so the goal, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll point you in the right direction, hopefully. It's a little bit more complex. So the goal is to get these to like wave in and out. Now, to get that as a pattern in SOLIDWORKS uh, without surfacing is really hard, unfortunately. Surfacing would be your best bet to do this. But I'll try and, I'll be honest, on the fly, like I, I, I have an idea on how to do it. I just don't know the best way to approach it, but I'll just give it a stab right now. So roughly, one thing you could do, I'm going to do this with a spline. Um, by having a line that kind of dives in and out like this along the front face, if you sweep, cut a circle along here, it will not, it should give you an effect that you want. Again, like I said, I just don't know the best way to set this up in a controlled environment. It would probably best be done by like copying the master sketch and then like offsetting it, right? and then offsetting it again and having this wavy line that I just created exist in between the two, right? So it would be coincident to both of these things. And in fact, I'm gonna exit the sketch. I'm gonna pull this, I'm just gonna simplify this to the, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the sketch and drag it before the split and just drag this up. Um, now, ideally, I, I set this up poorly because ideally this should be tangent to a line from the start. Let me see if I can fix this. So if I have a line here like this, if I make this and this tangent, it should give us a good starting point. There we go. Now, uh, arguably, this is probably too much of a wave this way but well, let's just see what happens. So if I create on this right plane a circle, and if I simply go exit out of the sketch, we wanna sweep cut the circle along this wavy line. The resulting form of diving in and out should give you a wave. Again, it's not perfect. Um, You may be able to like control, like push and pull on this to get something close to what you want. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a way to do it with lofts because that's what I've taught you. But that's, yeah, what you're asking to do is pretty complex. Um, if I try and show you the other way, another way. I mean, I'm assuming what you want, right, is like, well, again, I'm using splines now just for 
simplicity. So you're looking for something like this on this face, right? That's scallops. I mean, what I showed you, I would maybe just do one big feature or two. I wouldn't try and pattern it as, as much as you have it. Um, but you could maybe try, I'm gonna see if this works. If you mirror this and you split line on here, so features should be under curves, split line and click on this face. Yeah, I hate to say it, there's no easy way to do this because like you would want to control this wave, you would want to pattern it, and then you would want to delete these faces and put a like put a curved surface in there. And that's getting into surfacing. Um, if you want, that might be like a one-on-one. -on -one. If you want me to dive in there, I'm happy to help you with that. But I think the, the simplest way to get it, and we can look at that, if you're going with that um, hair dryer, we can look at that and talk about some features that might work for you. Um, my advice is, some, is just something simple, sim, simple like this, and, and, and play with your spline. Um, good question, though. If you want, I can meet with you after class. Since we are on splines, I just want to show you all one thing. I've talked to some of you. Some of you ended up using splines on your bottles. I just want to show you all the best way to use a spline, and this might be helpful for handles. If you actually look at the handle in the toaster demo from the video, that uses a spline. The simplest way to use the spline in this case is to, here we can just like pull some uh, some lines on here. So this is a very easy way to in, add an interesting shape to your handle. I, I give you all permission to use a spline. Um, it's this tool right here, or if you hit S, it's selected here. Simply the way to use a spline, the best way to use it is to select two points and it looks like a straight line and hit escape. And then simply to select the spline and just make it tangent to the two points. That's, that's my, in my opinion, that is, that is the best way to get a nice smooth looking spline. And then you can just simply drag these to be where you want them. Try to avoid splines that do things like this, the reverse curve, that's kind of odd. And now you've simply quickly added like an interesting bend to your handle. So that's something you can all do. So some requirements for project two. What did I talk about today? I said uh, three part lines. So this is important because as you're working on, I don't want to create more work for you. I want you all to be able to do this as you go. Three part lines, one bezel, uh, indicators on all knobs. Um, I think that's all I had. That's all I think. That's all I said. I'm trying to think. We can leave it there for now. I, I, I may add more though. Again, this is all all for realism. Uh, so part lines. Remember the, you know, split line, 0 0.02 inch fillet on edges. Uh, let's say I want grip somewhere at some point. Just one one example of grips. Cool. Any questions on that? Uh, on any in your nine files, um, you should have grips somewhere. Um, if you want to, yeah, I'll post this in an email. I'll just copy and paste this into an email. Cool, any other questions? Okay.